All right, so first things first, let me just get the tools out that you're gonna need for today's project just for the center console and stock radio. If you have a stock radio, you're gonna have to take all of this out, which is a pain. But, um, so what we have here is a, a flathead screwdriver and then another Phillips. It's just a, like a detachable bit. So Phillips and flathead. And then you're also going to need a eight millimeter socket for with a ratchet. And um, that's gonna be like used to take uh, two of these bolts out, I think. Not sure yet, I've never done this before. So, you know, there's a first time for everything. I just lost the bolt for the, the socket. So I should get that now. But um, yeah, those are all the tools you need. And let's get started. All right, so first things first, we have to remove this screw. And then there's another one on the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, now that those two screws are out, this one and the one right here, there's another two right here, one right there, and same on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these now. Now that these screws are all taken out, this thing's ready to come out actually. If I just lift it up, say it jiggles a lot. Um, let me zoom out. It jiggles a lot, see, it's, it's ready to come out. So. All you gotta do is take out those screws. It's really, really simple. It's nothing, you know, complicated at all. It's really easy to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these two screws out and we're just gonna, we're just gonna take this thing off because it is disgusting in there. And there's no reason to really keep it actually. Um, I plan on putting a, like a little um, e-brake boot around this and that'll just sit right there in front of the e-brake and then this will all be just cleared out. I should probably take out that shift boot too. It's really disgusting. So um, yeah, we're just gonna do that real quick and then I'll be right back. All right, now that the two screws are out, this thing's ready to come out. We're just gonna go ahead and lift that right off because we won't be needing this ever again. Put that off to the side right there and there we go. It is completely removed as you can see. And now all we're gonna do is buy a boot for this because this does not look good <laughs> all right moving on to the next step um, we're gonna have to remove that shift knob that we installed previously in the last video and um, that's going to be so we can take off the shift boot and take off this part of the console so once we take off the console for this piece we have to move on to taking out the ashtray and the cigarette lighter and we just got to work our way up until we can get to the radio itself in order to pull it out and put the other one in. All right, now that the shift knobs are removed, now we can go ahead and start taking off this center console, which is completely dirty. Probably gonna clean this once we uh, once we take it off, but um, the screws located for this part are all the way back there. I should probably reach the camera there just so you can see. Um, one right there. Other ones, of course, are gonna be on the other side, so we're gonna take those off, and then this thing should be ready to come up. I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out, but um, it should just pop right off, honestly. Okay, now that those two screws are removed, um, it's not coming out, so I'm assuming you have to remove um, all the things and connections to this. So before we move on to anything electrical, of course, you have to remove the, the battery uh, cable before you start messing with anything electrical. But first I'm gonna take out the bolts that are, or screws I think that are back there. Are they screws? I can't see. Yeah, they're screws. All right, so there's three screws that we gotta take out in order for this thing to come out. And then before I do this, I'm gonna remove the battery cable. I'll show you how to do that, it's really simple. And then once we do that, this thing should be able to just pop right off and then we can take this off and we should be good to go. Okay, the um, ashtray and the cigarette lighter are out and there are the cables right there. Really don't want to touch it, so we're just going to go ahead and go to the engine bay and remove that battery cable real quick. So let's pop the hood. Where is it? Is it this one? No, it's all the way back here. Pop it and let's go on outside. and remove this battery cable. All right, there's our battery right there. Here's the cable that we gotta take off right here. So, um, let me get a good view of it. All right, so this is a 10 millimeter. Come on, get in focus. This is a 10 millimeter um, like socket type wrench. I don't even know what to call it, but screws right there. 
and we're gonna go ahead and remove that uh, be careful not to touch the metal when you're messing with the cable so I'm gonna go ahead and do this and then we're gonna move on to taking out those clips and electrical connections right now that that annoying clip is now out this whole console piece right here is ready to come out obviously once we take this off this old radio is ready to come out and we can put the new one in so let me go ahead and shimmy this off like so uh, it looks like it's caught on something actually right now um, don't want to break it that's not what we want to do but um, it should just shimmy off and then once you take it off you know take off the shift boot and uh, that should be it so I'll be right back all right now that everything is removed we can go ahead and focus on getting this crappy radio out of here so we can listen to some tunes um, so I'm actually having a little bit of problem right now trying to get the actual radio off so I might have to go back and check to see what exactly needs to be removed from here but um, for the most part everything is cleared out of the way it looks like it wants to come out right now but it's something might be wedged in there um, maybe screws I'm assuming somewhere underneath maybe I don't know so I'll be right back and we are going to take this thing out now okay that was a pain in the butt um, the two screws were stripped so I had to end up using the 8 millimeter like I said in the beginning of the video and I had to use an extension do not attempt this unless you have a 3 8 extension because you won't get it because this bar right here will prevent you from moving the ratchet up and I had to bend it a little bit because I was trying to fit it up there but just don't just get a socket extension and make your life 30,000 times easier first I tried to break this off so I could get to it but at the end I just had to get a 3 8 extension and um, get it off there so all right now that it is installed we are done with the radio that was a pain in the butt I really don't want to ever do that again because that's just not fun so let's see if it boots up I'm gonna hold the clutch in make sure it's a neutral and there we go powered up we got power now we can move on to painting everything else, such as the wheels and the valve cover. Yeah. All right, and here's the finished product so far. This is where we're gonna stop for today, and I will continue tomorrow. All right, it is day three of part two for Project Integra. I finished the first wheel, which is over there to my left, and then I have the new one, which is over there to the right, so, it was kind of hard at first because I didn't know what I was doing, but now that I kind of got the concept of it, uh, it's not as hard as it is now because I have the right materials now. Yesterday I didn't have the right tools or like materials, so now that I went to the store and got something that'll really, really help, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what the wheel looks like before and then I'm going to show you what it looks like after. So let's get started. All right, that's what the wheel looks like after nothing has been touched. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so we can really get all up and close on it. And here's the second wheel, which has a couple specs here and there. It's not the greatest, but um, uh, I tried. I like, you can see like that little spec right there. But I'll probably fix that later. So that's the kind of goal I'm, I'm trying to achieve with all four wheels. Alright, so first things first, we're going to wash the wheel down, wipe it down so it's nice and dry and clean. Then we can start to strip the paint off and get ready to paint. Alright, 
first things first, safety first. I got goggles, mask, and gloves, and long, long sleeve, or a hoodie, and pants. Uh, this is aircraft remover, so this stuff is really, really bad if you breathe it in, or if you get it on your skin, it'll really, really burn. So make sure you're wearing the right equipment for this, because it will do some damage. So it says on the cap to allow air to escape and then remove the cap, so I'm guessing you have to remove it slowly. Alright, so now that I got the aircraft remover open, we're going to go ahead and get our paintbrush. We're going to get a cup to put the aircraft remover in, so we can just dip it in there and then just wipe down anywhere where we see black and then we're finished and we wait that way we can sand it down and begin to prime the paint. Alright, so I'm going to start off with just sanding it down now. Uh, this is a 120 grit, so it's kind of a kind of high, but uh, I don't want to rough them down too bit, so too bad. So uh, let's just get started. Alright, after we used the aircraft remover and sprayed it down two times, about three times, this is kind of like what it looks like now. Um, it's not the best, I still have some work to do, but um, for the most part it's all gone and that's like the best part because now we can move on to sanding even more and getting all that stuff off so we can paint. All right. Now I'm just going to wipe down all this excess stuff and then we can start sanding some more. Alright, now that I sanded it down from 120 to 220 to 400, I'm going to go ahead and mask it off now and then I'm going to uh, just paint the outer lip red and then once that's done in about an hour we'll come back remove that mask up the red and then paint the wheel white so right now I'm just masking it up Now that the entire rim is wrapped in masking tape, we're going to go ahead and get some paper and just put it on the edge of the wheel and the tire like that. So that way I can just start spraying without getting it on the tire.
All right, first scoop. All right, so here's the end of part two for Project Integra. I have to cut it short for today because paint takes forever to dry. Um, yesterday, I, I waited uh, basically all day for it to dry. It doesn't look really good to me, uh, but I'll probably go ahead and spray it again tomorrow. Uh, give it one more coat. Uh, I actually ran out of spray paint too, so. This is the end for part two. I'm probably gonna upload it like this. Um, but if you want to see the final product, just go ahead on my Instagram, which is Myton Films, spelled just like the channel name, and um, you can see how this turns out. But uh, I have to call it quits for today. Um, I can't get to the valve cover because my day is basically over. So this concludes part two for Project Integra. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.